All right, today I'm gonna switch things up a little bit and talk about uh, the gear that all independent filmmakers must have, in my opinion. And stay to the end, you wanna hear the last one. It's my personal favorite, and I think it's elevated uh, all of my short films. And just wanna start off by saying thank you guys for watching my last two short films I put out. They're getting a lot of great recep reception and uh, I really do appreciate it. So kicking things off, first things first, to me, you gotta get a camera. Now, depending on what type of camera you want can be kind of overwhelming. Uh, I'm gonna go back to you know my Canon M50. I used to shoot uh, short films on this bad boy, shoots in 4K, 24, just fine. Uh, when you're thinking about getting a camera, first of all, make sure you can control the frames per second uh, because shooting in 24 frames per second is going to give you that classic film look and that's all due to how quickly or slowly they could crank the film back in the days we'll talk about that another time uh, the camera i invested my money into is my bgh1 uh, i got it for a good deal and it is netflix approved and again go on ebay facebook marketplace I mean, be careful with that uh, or you can go on any of the third-party uh, offer-up sites for uh, filmmaking and cinematic gear. Uh, the BGH-1 does have 12 stops of dynamic range. It also uh, has controllable variable frame rates. It has amazing low-light capabilities. It has two base ISOs, uh, all the fun little things. But at the end of the day, uh, I personally care about if it can shoot 4K, uh, just because I like to have a specific amount of information when I'm editing and the 10 bit log format is really important if you are trying to elevate to that next step of filmmaking. You don't have to get an expensive Canon or uh, an expensive Canon, an expensive Red, Sony, or Ari Alexa. You can get a nice BGH1 or any camera that is close at hand. It could be your cell phone. Number two, which I think is more important to the camera, is really invest in your lenses. Now, glass is gonna determine how good the quality of the light's gonna be in any camera. Uh, it, there's videos on YouTube where you see people using expensive glass on cheap cameras, and it just elevates it. Uh, I do have a Cereu anamorphic uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, I like that anamorphic look. I like lens flares. I like that classic Hollywood look. Uh, the glass is going to determine the look and feel and mood of your films. And there's a lot of awesome third-party lenses out there. There's a lot of awesome uh, brand name lenses that you know are compatible with Lumix, Canon, and Sony. Lenses are going to be your sort of style and your identity. You don't have to break the bank for lenses. I believe I got this one for... $300 and it is amazing and it's smooth and I've used it for a lot of my short films in the past. Uh, number three, I believe this is pivotal in creating very cinematic, moody and stylized films. Uh, I'm gonna preface it by saying, learn how to use your cameras and learn how to expose properly because lighting is the most important thing, 50 percented with sound. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but movies are visuals and they are auditory. So without good lighting, you're not gonna have a good looking cinematic film. And if you yourself knows how to use your camera, the bigger the budgets get, the more you'll understand the visual language in which you're trying to speak. So lights are the next important thing. Uh, I do have some big boys. My GVM uh, 300C is probably my favorite light that I use when it comes to shooting spaces, not faces, which is really important. But at the end of the day, uh, you just need a light that's powerful enough to be able to uh, capture the dynamic range and create some contrast in your film. And this is a 300 watt. Uh, I'm using a 100 watt right here and a 60 watt behind me right now to light myself in this video. So again, you don't need to break the bank. I think this 300 is, uh, I think about 300, $400. And respectively, the 100 I have right here 
is about $200 and the 60 I have right there is about $125. So when you're thinking about getting lights, think about the wattage and that can help you determine a base lumens sort of output, but don't always go by that rule of thumb. Again, your camera and your lenses will have a huge effect on the quality of light, but you got to have light in the first place. I do like shooting in natural lighting, but with my type of style of filmmaking, I love things to be highly contrasted and I love saturation. As you see right now, I have some blue splashing me on the back. So that was number three. Definitely invest your time into getting lights after you invest in your lenses and your camera. All right, number four, you definitely got to think about what type of sound you want to invest in because having a good shotgun and having some lovely ears and having a camera that has good uh, on-camera sound for when you're editing and you need some scratch sound to layer up and line up in post, sound is very important. Sound makes or breaks a movie. I've seen gorgeous short films on YouTube. I've seen gorgeous films in theaters. Christopher Nolan gets a lot of flack for this. I do like his style, but again, sound is very important. Uh, just like you're doing visual storytelling, you need that auditory side of things. And there's a lot you can get away with in post with ADR, uh, with my Blue Yeti mic right here. I do a lot of ADR in house, but capturing good, clear, clean sound on set is gonna just heighten your movies to the stratosphere, to that next level. And as an independent filmmaker, yeah, you might not be able to do boom operation or anything like that, but get yourself a nice recorder. Uh, I have a Zoom H4N. Or yes, get yourself a good recorder first and foremost, and then you can invest in a shotgun and lavaliers. But a good recorder, being able to record sound in and out of your camera and separately outside of your camera is gonna make all the difference, I promise you. And you can do it solo. I do it solo all the time. So, we talked about your camera, lenses, lighting, and sound. What's my personal favorite though? I shouldn't have done that like right in front of the camera, but creating atmosphere is everything. And what makes every movie look like a movie? Now, it could be filters on the lenses themselves. It could be the color grade to be able to capture that. But at the end of the day, we're always trying to emulate film because why do we call it films in the first place? Film creates this beautiful quality of light being played with and color. And it adds this language of nostalgia and separation from reality. And the easiest way to create that is with a hazer or smoke machines. Now I do have a smoke machine I use to fill up the entire place before or prior to getting this, which we'll talk about this in a later video. Uh, Colbert sent me this. This comes out on December 15th, so I'll do a separate video on that. But being able to put fog and or haze in a room will just diffuse the light. It'll diffuse shadows, it'll lift them a bit. Blacks won't be just heavy black and highlights will be nice and milky smooth and create a natural halation and or a bloom effect, sorry. It'll create a natural blooming effect. Halation we'll talk about later for another day. And it just adds that little bit of style that everybody is always looking and searching for, but they don't quite know what the specific thing is that's used. And it, haze is used in everything, the big budget films to indie films. If you truly want to elevate your films to a level in which you're proud of and you're happy about and start willing, winning some film festivals, haze, that's it, man. That's the secret. So make sure you are invested in your time into getting these, these pieces of gear. Everything else is optional. Yes, get tripods, get gimbals, get all of these things. But before I had money to get any of that stuff, I needed something to be able to capture visuals and sound with and be able to sort of elevate that in my personal way with lighting and with haze. 
so if there's anything else that you guys think have helped you escalate uh, and elevate and all the synonyms to, to describe that you've been able to reach a height of filmmaking that you've been happy about that was a long way of saying that please put in the comments and again if you like this video please watch any of these other videos that will be listed here after this video and like share and subscribe i appreciate you guys dearly and uh look forward to the next short film we'll be shooting in a couple weeks here thank you guys have a great rest of your day Thank you.